U.S. Senator Josh Hawley talks to us about his call for an investigation into China's role in the pandemic. Plus, some four state meat processors are experiencing a major boom in business, and the owner of one butcher shop in Web City thinks he knows why. Details are coming up. There's some activity again at Crowder College after the campus slowly starts to reopen. I'm Zach Dodge with the story. The four states most watched news starts now. Missouri Senator Josh Hawley talks about his bill to hold China accountable for damages caused by the coronavirus. This is KOAM News at 6. KOAM's Chris Warner spoke with the senator and has more. We spoke with Senator Hawley about the bill he filed and the subsequent lawsuit filed by Missouri Attorney General Eric Schmidt. Under current federal law, China has what's called sovereign immunity, which prevents the suit from going to court. However, Senator Hawley says he's introducing legislation to change that so Missourians and Americans can have their day in court. Hawley says it's important to hold China accountable. They knew they had an outbreak in Wuhan way back before the beginning of the new year. They knew that they were going to have a major health crisis. And what do they do? They silenced the whistleblowers. They jailed the doctors who initially tried to get the government to act. And they allowed people to travel all over the place, knowing that it would spread and cause a health pandemic. And here we are. Holly says his goal is to have Chinese assets frozen so Americans can recoup costs related to the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm Chris Warner for KOAM News. Joplin school officials made an appearance at the city's COVID-19 briefing today. They discussed what summer school would look like for students this year. The biggest change that kids will see, students will not travel to different classes. They'll be kept in the same room with the same teachers. There will also be changes to how students are dropped off. We will not be having parents come into the building. They will be dropped off at the curb at a certain time, and those students then will go straight to their classroom. We will not, as usual, have an assembly area. Summer school will run from June 1st through July 1st. The Department of Health and Human Services has released $135 million in funds to help Missouri expand its COVID-19 testing capabilities. The funding was included in the Paycheck Protection Program and Health Care Enhancement Act. It'll be used to develop, purchase, administer, process, and analyze coronavirus tests. It'll also support employer testing. Carthage-based Leggett and Platt has announced more layoffs. 200 employees in the company's corporate office have been laid off. The company has already laid off 720 other workers at its Carthage facility. Doug Hetty joins us now with a first look at the weather, getting a chance to dry out some, not enough, but at least some. Yeah, we had uh, more showers and thunderstorms during the morning into the early afternoon hours, and those have all pushed on by. At least we're getting some sunshine now, so this has helped our temperatures warm up quite a bit. We are going to stay dry through the evening and a good chunk of the overnight hours tonight as these storms are gone, but we are watching more thunderstorms building out across western Oklahoma and down through the panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas. But at least temp's great. Most of us upper 60s to low to mid 70s, depending on where you live. It's going to be a slow drop this evening. We'll kind of drop back through the 60s. I think we'll only drop to 63 or 64 for us tonight. So at least we have warmed up, but we still have thunderstorm chances in the forecast over the next several days. So we're going to break this all down for you coming up here in just a bit. All right, we'll see you then. While the coronavirus has dealt a blow to countless businesses here in the four state area, it seems to have provided a spike in customers to local meat processors. Multiple butcher shops tell KOAM they've seen a big increase in orders and it's led to an extended wait. KOAM's Mike Mahoney spoke to the owner of S&J Processing in Webb City to learn more. Business has been booming at Webb City's S&J Processing lately, and that's just the way Charlotte Sargent likes it. We're here in the morning at 6 before the phones ring and the doors open at 8, so we can get two or three out, just, you know, whether it be pigs or cows, we just get them out. Charlotte's son Anthony is the owner of S&J, and he says he hasn't seen a demand like this during his decade in the business. I'm not over-exaggerating. I'm probably getting between 100 and 150 phone calls a day of people trying to get uh, beef, 
and their hogs processed here. And the reason for the increase in orders and customer wait times? Anthony thinks the culprit is coronavirus concerns. These processing plants, these packing plants, the big ones uh, that are feeding the American people are beginning to be shut down. I think now they're reopening. Uh, but yeah, so with that, people are kind of wondering what's going to happen in the next few weeks to the next few months. And so they're, they're making sure that their family are secure with having meat on the table by having meat in the freezer. Anthony says he's grateful for the increased business, but would also appreciate a return to normalcy for the sake of his customers. If fear is the thing that's driving this, I don't want fear to, to, to rule the, the people. And so if I was to say, hey, could I slack it down a little bit as far as our busyness and, and erase fear from people? Absolutely. But we're not we're not afraid of the busyness as well. And while things may still be busy at SNJ, Anthony still has his mom watching his back. It starts with me and then it goes down to my son. <laughs> yeah, it's teamwork, but it's it, it we are so blessed. In Web City, Mike Mahoney, KOAM News. The team at SNJ Processing says it's not just local meat processors who've seen an increase in demand. They say four state farmers are seeing a big increase from local customers who want to buy cattle and hogs. Another Northeast Kansas food processing plant is temporarily halting operations after a small number of COVID-19 cases were confirmed among its workers. A spokesperson for Johnsonville said they're suspending production Starting this afternoon at their Holton, Kansas sausage processing plant after five of their employees tested positive. Johnsonville says all employees will continue to get paid and downtime will be used to implement even more aggressive safety protocols. Jackson County health officials are commending Johnsonville for implementing aggressive safety measures early on, which helped them to identify the virus quickly. Stables Casino in Miami, Oklahoma has announced its new opening date. The casino will open on May 25th at 9 a.m. The casino will be open from 9 a.m. to 2.30 a.m. daily. All staff members and vendors will wear face masks and they're encouraging guests to do the same. To help with that, they're going to provide those masks as well as disinfectant wipes and hand sanitizer as long as supply allows. Riverbend Casino announced it'll reopen on June 1st. That casino says it'll release more details at a later date. Kansas Crossing Casino officials say they're still waiting to determine when they'll reopen. They hope to open as soon as May 18th if phase two of the Kansas reopening plan is approved, but they point to unknown restrictions that could cause a delay in reopening. Missouri's governor will soon consider a bill that would require all hospitals in the state to offer rape kits. Now, currently, few hospitals have certified staff qualified to use the rape kits to gather evidence of sexual assault. The bill passed the House yesterday. The measure would give hospital access to virtual and in-person training on rape kits. By 2023, all hospitals would be required to provide rape kits. The Vernon County Sheriff's Office has arrested a Sheldon, Missouri man. They say stabbed a family member multiple times. 20 year old Wesley Campbell is charged with second degree domestic assault and armed criminal action. A press release from the Sheriff's Office is a stabbing, stabbing happened on Monday night. The victim was taken to the hospital and is expected to make a full recovery. Still ahead, Crowder College faculty and staff are back on campus. We're going to hear what that means to them and look at the precautions the college is taking to keep them safe. And we're going to tell you what you need to know about a puppy scam. Live from KOAM, you're watching KOAM News at 6. This is the four states most watched news. Crowder College is starting to see some activity on its campuses as they start to reopen. KOIM Zach Dodge has the story. Are we putting this on your From shoes? seeing students and other staff, Thank you. Good luck. Have a good one. to hearing the sound of the bell tower, <laughs> 
Crowder College bookstore manager Colleen Holland has missed a lot about being on campus. Going from people coming in to buy a soda and buy books and shop to, to being working on your couch or sitting in, at the kitchen table to do work. It's been a big change. So she's glad to be off the couch and back behind a counter. It's been really nice to be around and see everybody and just kind of feel like you have a workplace again. On Monday, Crowder reopened the campus after being closed since March 23rd. When the state allowed workers to go back, then it's like, okay, what can we do? As students already know, the spring semester is over, so classes aren't currently happening, and summer school will be online. So the main things happening on campus are enrollment, paying fees for summer classes, and going to the bookstore to return books. As students are finishing up their spring semester, they want to be able to get their books back to us, but you know, it costs to ship them. Now, while there's a lot happening on campus, there's not quite as much as one may think, since a lot of people are still working from home to maximize social distancing. So, you know, somebody might work a Monday, Thursday, and someone else in that office works a Tuesday, Friday, just trying to get back to a little more of the normal home atmosphere, but with social distancing, making sure that we take um, all the precautions we can. So while things may not be back to normal just yet, Holland likes the idea of taking the initial step. We're glad to be back. We welcome everybody, keeping the social distancing in mind, <laughs> and we would love to have everybody come see us. In the O Show, Zach Dodge, KOAM News. All of Crowder's campuses in the area are open again. Summer classes start on June 1st. Online fees for those classes are being waived. A woman from Newton County, Missouri, says she was the victim of a puppy buying scam. Connie Tymon says a friend of hers wanted to buy a dachshund and they found one through a website called puppiessafezone.com. She paid a $600 deposit and then was told she needed to pay $900 for an insurance policy before the puppy could be shipped to her. As, uh, I mean, Anyone who wants a puppy should have one. <laughs> but the lesson we learned is that you need to see and be able to touch the dog and see it before you put any money out for it, because that's where we made our mistake. She says she did report the incident to local, state, and federal authorities, as well as the Better Business Bureau. The BBB has issued a warning about the Puppies Safe Zone website. A little bit later, the Pittsburgh boys basketball team now has a new head coach. We're going to hear from him coming up. Plus, of course, we have more showers and thunderstorms in the forecast. We're going to look at that coming up. It's time to get your AC ready for the summer with a tune-up from Pascal. Any of the breakdowns Pascal repairs during the summer could have been prevented with our $88 AC tune-up. Be prepared for the summer heat. Call Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric to schedule your tune-up today. At Bishop and Hayes, we've served the Ozarks for almost 20 years. We are different from most other firms that pass on their clients to associates. At Bishop and Hayes, your case is handled directly by Brad Bishop or me. We believe in personally helping the people of Southwest Missouri at a very desperate time in their lives. If you have been seriously injured in an auto accident, you only have one chance for a fair recovery. Bishop and Hayes, auto injury law, it's all we do. Summer is right around the corner, so it's a great time to replace your old worn out AC before it's too late. Save big this spring with an entire new AC system installed for only $55.55. Get your home ready for the summer heat. Call Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric today. Arvest Bank, ready to help. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. On behalf of the faculty and staff at St. Mary's Colgan, we want to wish you the very best the world has to offer. Seniors, we are very proud of you. Congratulations and God bless. We miss you and we're praying for you. Congratulations, St. Mary's Colgan, class of 2020.
And remember, God loves you and so do we. Let's go. Definitely turned out to be another sloppy start to the day. We had clouds, we had showers, we had thunderstorms rolling through, especially uh, north of I-44. So more rain across the region. Temperatures were kind of chilly, though, but once we got the rain out of here and got a little bit of sunshine, temperatures have really warmed up quite a bit, at least over the past several hours. Great time lapse. Buffalo Run Casino and Resort, of course. That is Miami, Oklahoma. Most areas along and south of I-44, at least your rain wasn't that heavy, only a tenth of an inch at the Joplin Airport. But areas north of that really picked up half an inch to an inch across the region. And our temperatures, they've been so cold for the past uh, couple days, mainly into the 40s. But look at it today. We really shot up. We got all the way through the 50s, 60s, up into the 70s over the past couple hours. So our 24-hour temperature change, it's 20 to about 25 degrees warmer right now compared to this time yesterday evening. 71 in Yates Center, 72 in Nowata, 76 in Grove, Pittsburgh at 69. Neosho is sitting at 70. It looks great. Fantastic evening if you want to get outside and enjoy it. Looking at 7th and Range Line. Currently sitting at 70. South winds at about... 15 to 20, so it is breezy and our humidity is high at 81%. Temperatures are going to slowly drop through the 60s, but we're going to hang into the 60s for overnight lows tonight. Any thunderstorms we had earlier, these are gone. These have pushed off toward the east, so we look fine now, and I think we're going to be fine over the next several hours. Thunderstorms out across western Oklahoma and Texas. These are going to try to head toward us later on tonight. I really think they're going to fall apart. Not a huge deal. But we have this warm front on top of us, so that's why we got the scattered thunderstorms for us today. And as this system works in over the next couple of days, our rain chances are going to really increase. So again, the evening, most of the overnight hours look OK. I do think we'll see some scattered showers and thunderstorms kind of hit and miss through the morning hours tomorrow. And then we're going to heat up again, partly sunny skies during the afternoon. So very similar to what we have seen today. 64 to start, 72 by noon, high temp near 80. Still windy, south winds 15 to 25. Scattered evening thunderstorms, mainly in our northern counties. Some of these could be strong, possibly severe, so we'll keep our eyes on that. But most of the storms stay in our northern counties through tomorrow evening. And then tomorrow night, everybody will get into the action as showers and thunderstorms start to push a little bit farther south. And we are going to have a severe threat with these tomorrow night into Friday morning. More thunderstorms kind of on and off throughout the day on Friday. So our rain will really start to pick up. Severe threat, though, tomorrow. And again, this is tomorrow night. I think it's mainly low, but we'll watch it. Tornado threat is low. We'll elevate hail, wind, and of course, uh, we'll have to go high threat on rain just because we've had the flash flooding issues. And again, rainfall over the next few days, a lot of areas are going to pick up two, three, maybe upwards to four inches of rain, something we definitely do not need. Severe threats, so we'll go low tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, and then we'll go to break, and then it kind of kicks back in once again by the middle of next week. Near 80, though, over the next several days, mid-70s. Sunday and Monday, and then back into the lower 80s by the middle of next week. Hopefully, this sh that should have been all the cold air, so we're done now. It was really cold, and yeah. it's going to be near 80 tomorrow. Yeah, pretty good. Quite a swing. Thanks, Doug. Hey, don't forget, you can always stay ahead of the storm with KOAM Skywatch weather app. You can check out the latest radar, get severe weather updates. They can be sent straight to your phone, and best of all, doesn't cost a dime. You can find the Skywatch weather app in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Still ahead, we're going to meet the new head coach for the Pittsburgh boys basketball team. And the city of Galena wanted to make sure its graduating seniors got the proper recognition. We're going to tell you how they did that. Pittsburgh High School has hired a new boys basketball head coach. Sports director Jacob Leonard has details. Pittsburgh High School has named Jordan Woods the next head coach of the boys basketball program. Now Woods steps into that role after Kylie Rolfs resigned last month after 21 years with the team. Woods is no stranger to Southeast Kansas. He actually grew up playing for Pittsburgh's rival, Fort Scott, and has been an assistant at Pittsburgh for the last nine seasons. He says he's excited for the chance to put his stamp on the program, and that includes hard work and a lot of fun. Basketball is one of the longest seasons out there, so it, it can turn into a grind if you let it, but 
again, as long as you're having fun and doing stuff the right way and you're, you're with your friends and your players, then it, it can be a lot of fun. Tonight at 10, we'll have more from Woods and hear from a Pittsburgh player on their new head coach. Reporting in Pittsburgh, Jacob Leonard, KOAM Sports. Pittsburgh boys have been SEK conference champions four of the last five seasons. Main Street in Galena, Kansas is no longer just a road. It's a tribute to the class of 2020. The city is hanging banners with yearbook photos of every graduating senior. They got the idea from a small town in West Virginia that hung banners to honor student athletes, but Galena took it a step further by honoring the entire class. Final check on weather is next. Take time now to honor a local veteran, Corporal Randall Yates. The Joplin native served in the U.S. Marine Corps, and we are proud to salute Corporal Randall Yates. He's tonight's four state hero. Why not recognize some of the veterans you know? Submit their name to our four state hero program. It's very simple to do. All you have to do is go to our website, KOAMnewsnow.com. Checking back in with Doug Hetty. It's good to see the sun shining, at least for the moment. Doug. It is. If you want to get outside throughout the evening hours, it looks like a pretty nice one. Most of us are into the 70s now, and of course, the sun doesn't set for two more hours. Or it doesn't really get dark for two more hours, but looks pretty good. A few scattered thunderstorms in here again late tonight, tomorrow morning, and then we got to watch tomorrow night with a severe threat and then kind of thunderstorms on and off on Thursday or on Friday and Saturday. But you can see temperatures look great through the period. And I know you'll keep an eye on the stormy possibilities for us. Thanks, Doc. Thank you for joining us. Please do be careful out there. Let's take care of ourselves and each other.